Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Absolutely Shaw. Welcome to my channel. Now, once a week, I like to come to you with a true crime story time. Um, also, in between those videos, I like to do unboxings, hauls, and I like to talk about my hair extension company, Glam Trust Hair. So if you are looking for top quality hair extensions, make sure you check out my website below. Now, today's video obviously is a true crime video and I have a special guest with me. I have my dog, Bruno. Um, if you've seen any of my other previous videos, he always makes, um, he always appears and you don't see him you hear him <coughs> excuse me so i thought that maybe to cut down and minimize on all the barking that you hear in the background maybe it's just best that i put on i put him on my lap and i do my true crime story time that way so hopefully he doesn't hear another dog barking because that's usually what sets him off. We live in a very dog friendly, pet friendly community. So nine times out of 10, he does all of the barking because he's hearing another dog, excuse me. <coughs> I still have this cough. I know, I know. I need to go to the doctor because I've had this cough for way too long. Anyway, I digress. You are here for my true crime story time. So today's story is going to be about Rattlesnake James. So if you are interested in hearing why in the world is this man being referred to as Rattlesnake James, then stick around. Now, Rattlesnake James, before he became known as Rattlesnake James, he was going by two different names. He first was going by Raymond Lessonba, and then he started going by Robert S. James. Now, there's not that much information on him. Um, some report that he was born in 1894. Some websites report that he was born in 1895. So he was born either 1894 or 1895. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, there isn't really much information about his earlier life as well um, in regards to like his childhood. So I did research and I did read that he worked in the cotton fields and that his sister's husband sent him to barber school. That's pretty much all the information that's really given, <clears throat> excuse me, about his earlier life. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, in 1914, um, in the month of October, on the 8th, he married a young woman by the name of Maud Duncan. Now, this was in Birmingham, Alabama. This is his first wife. That's pretty much all the information that is given about the first wife is that her name was Maud Duncan, and they got married in Birmingham, Alabama in 1914. Now, somewhere between 1917 and 1925, Rattlesnake James changed his name from Raymond Lesenba. He started going by Robert S. James. Now, in a Kansas census, it was reported that Robert S. James was married to Avera May James, which apparently is his second wife. Again, there's not much information really given about the second wife, but that's when he reportedly married her in 1925. He married her. Now, sometime after that, James, which I'll start referring him to now as James, got notified that he was the sole beneficiary of an uncle's $4,000 life insurance policy. Now, once James apparently got wind that he was getting this, <clears throat> excuse me, $4,000 life insurance policy, he started to commit fraud. Now, once I tell you the rest of the details of this story, the kind of fraud that he gets into is insurance fraud, is what James' um, new, new, new thing was. Now, I guess with the $4,000 that he received from the uncle, he opens up a barber shop. Um, in La Canada, Flint Ridge, California. Forgive me if I'm saying that wrong. But he opens up a barber shop there. 
And so this is um, around 1932 is when he does this. Now, he meets a third wife, okay, Wyona Wallace. And he takes out not one, but two, two $5,000 life insurance policies from Prudential he takes out on Wyona Wallace. Now, Wyona and James, they're in the car, driving, driving, driving. Wyona is behind the wheel. She's the one that's driving. And they're driving down like a Pike View Highway in Glen Clove, Colorado. <clears throat> and so Wyona is behind the wheel. And apparently Wyona drives the car off the road. Now, James is able to jump out of the car. However, Wyona is still trapped inside the car and the car was stopped because it was, the car hit like a large boulder. And so the car is like 150 feet below down from the road. So rescuers come and luckily Wyona, she's still alive. She has minor injuries. However, it's stated that she smelled of liquor and that she had a massive wound to the back of her head. So this happens in September. October, Wyona is released from the hospital, hospital and she's recovering in a cottage in Manitou Springs. So a week later, it said that James and a grocer. So I don't know, I guess back then grocers maybe made house deliveries, um, maybe James and the grocery worker were friends. I'm not sure, but it just says that James and a grocery worker, um, discovered Wyona's body. Um, she was dead on her back in a half filled bathtub. Okay. Now at a coroner's inquest, a medical examiner stated that James had stated that Apparently, Wyona must have ignored the doctor's orders um, about washing her hair due to her head wounds and that she must have drowned. Now, Prudential did eventually award James the two $5,000 life insurance policies that he had taken out on Wyona. So, suspicious, right? Now, sometime after then, James reportedly marries a Ruth Thomas. This is his fourth wife. Now, James has had stated that he wasn't sure about that marriage, that he was drunk. And so he went and he got it annulled in New Orleans in 1934. Are you keeping up with me so far? Now, at some point, James takes out an insurance policy on his nephew, Cornelius Wright. Now, Cornelius Wright was a young sailor. He was out on leave. And so James invited Cornelius to come and visit him. So Cornelius comes, he's visiting his uncle. James lets him borrow his car and guess what happens? Cornelius drives the car off the road. And so the, um, the tow, the mechanic, he comes, he tows the wreck. And then it's reported that he told James that something was wrong with the car's steering wheel. <clears throat> okay. So like James is on a roll here. Okay. He's just taking out these insurance policies left and right, left and right. He's taking out these insurance policies and magically people are dying every single time he takes out an insurance policy on them. Okay. So now <clears throat> James and March, of 1935, he meets his fifth wife, Mary Emma Baksh. Baksh. Sorry if I'm saying her name wrong. I totally apologize. But he marries his fifth wife. Now, it's stated that in June of that year that James somehow talks to a customer of his by the name of Charles Hope. And so Charles Hope is like struggling financially. So James goes to him and he says, hey, I want you to help me kill Mary for her $5,000 life insurance policy. And he tells Charles that 
it'll be a hundred dollars he'll pay for a hundred dollars of the expenses and that he needs two rattlesnakes are you seeing how he's about to get the name rattlesnake james are you seeing it yes so this happened in june two months later in august charles goes to mary and james home and when he walks in he sees mary she's pregnant tied to the table and her mouth and her hands are covered okay and so James tells Charles that how he was able to get Mary on the table was that he told her that a doctor was coming to perform a surgery for pregnancy. Now, when I was doing this research, I did read just one article mentioned that Mary wanted to have an abortion, but I didn't read it anywhere else, so I don't know. So I guess that's how, I don't know if maybe that's, why he mentioned that a doctor was going to come and perform a surgery for pregnancy but if charles noticed that she was pregnant she must have been visibly pregnant and quite further along in the presence pregnancy for him to realize that she was pregnant well anyway so mary's tied to the table and so charles has um the two snakes and so james puts mary foot in the box with two of the snakes and the two of them leave so this happens in the morning so James and Charles leave and they return back at 1 30 that day and they find Mary they find her drugged and like visibly visibly like aggravated and agitated which I don't I guess the snakes the rattlesnakes maybe they venom wasn't lethal enough. apparently it wasn't lethal enough because she was still alive when they came back so james then takes mary to the bathtub drowns her and then he takes her body out to the fish pond <coughs> excuse me to make it appear as though it was an accident now they did basically rule that Mary's death was an accident. He did receive the life insurance policy money for it. However, however, it wasn't until Charles boy started bumping, started bumping his gums and started talking. It was up until that point where they started looking into really what happened with Mary's death. Now, one day, Charles is out at the bar and he's talking and he's drunk and so he opens up and shares about how he was involved in the death of Mary. The bartender hears this. He contacts the police. The police arrest Charles and then Charles basically admits to everything and tell the police everything that happened. Um, with his involvement with Mary's death and basically how James came to him with the offer of helping him kill Mary. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, in 1936, James is arrested for the murder of Mary. Um, an autopsy was done. They did find that Mary did have a bite, um, snake bite on her toe. So as a result, Charles, Hope, and Robert S. James was convicted and found guilty of the murder of Mary. Now, Charles Hope, he received um, life in prison and James, which now Rattlesnake James, he received um, the death penalty, which back then it was execution by hanging. So, <coughs> in May 1st of 1942, Rattlesnake James was executed by hanging in San Quentin um, State Prison in California. And that's how he got the name Rattlesnake James. <coughs> so there you have it. That is my true crime story time. Please, please, please leave me a comment below and let me know what are your thoughts about this story. I found it like insane. Like he literally was just killing off people for $5,000 life insurance policy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I thought that was absolutely like, it's crazy. So like, comment, subscribe to my channel. Don't you leave off this channel without giving this video a thumbs up and letting me know 
what do you think about the Rattlesnake James story? So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day and say bye-bye to Bruno. I think he did really good. He, he didn't make a peep. He was trying to get off of my lap in between me talking, but I think he did good. Look, you got a video with no barking in the background. I'm sorry, I am still coughing. I'm gonna work on that. Um, but yeah, so I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If there are any other true crime stories that you would like me to research and do a video on, please drop a comment below and I will see you in my very next video. Bye.